Hello, I'm Evan Brand, Certified Functional Medicine Practitioner, talking with you today about the top four things that you need to watch out for if you're trying to swim safely in water. So since summer's coming up, I figured this would be a, a timely video for people. I work with many people around the world that they want to enjoy life. What is the purpose of being healthy if you're not actually doing anything? You're just sitting on the couch, right? So I, I encourage people to get out and hike and bike and swim and enjoy themselves. But you have to be safe about what you're getting exposed to while you're in water. This is at your home, this is at your friend's pool, your community pool, your lakes, your rivers, your streams, etc. Water quality is a big deal in terms of your drinking water, but also the water that you're bathing in and that you're enjoying your recreational activities in. So the first thing we have to look out for is something called trihalomethanes. Now these are the chemical byproducts that are in your water. So a lot of our municipal tap water supply companies, what they're doing is they're adding these chemicals to the water to disinfect them. And we can't remove all of these and not all of them get removed in the process as we're purifying water. You know, so we have chloroform, we have bromoform, we have several different trihalomethanes. You mostly get exposed to these when you're taking a hot shower, for example. Uh, there was a study at, uh, for in Canada that looked at the, I'll just call it THMs for short, and the hotter the water, the more trihalomethanes that you were exposed to, and you're primarily just gonna be breathing these in and they're gonna be getting into the bloodstream via the lungs. So cooler is better in terms of water temperature if you're trying to ignore if you're trying to stay away from these, but also a good shower filter is going to be the best investment. So parabens, this is the number two thing you're going to get exposed to. Mainly here I'm talking about in swimming pools. So let's say that you're on the journey of a healthy lifestyle, you've already removed a lot of the bad skincare products, hopefully you have. But if you look on the back of your ingredient list of your sunscreens or any of your lotions or creams, you need to make sure that there's no parabens on there. So you have things like methyl, methyl paraben, you have propy or propyl paraben, YL, propyl paraben. There's many different parabens, but mainly if you're not putting these on and lathering them on or using them yourself, other people are still going to be using those and those are going to be in the water. So think about when you see people spraying on the very conventional chemical laden uh, sunscreen sprays that oil and the parabens with it are going to be washing off into the water and you're swimming in that water sometimes you can even see it floating on the surface of the water so you know parabens is something that i had to stay away from and my wife as well she was covered in hives at one point in her life from head to toe and we found out that she had a very severe allergic reaction to parabens she had bumps all over her body that were itching and we had to remove parabens as, long, as well as a lot of other you know, skincare chemicals as well. So phthalates, this is a big one here. So phthalates are what are added to plastic to soften the plastic. So you're not typically gonna see phthalates on the label, but you're gonna know that they're in there if you're using anything that has like a soft plastic material to it. So once again, phthalates, this is something that people may have on their skin or they may be exposed to and you get exposed to it in the water as just a byproduct of swimming with other people in other people's water essentially. And then parasites, you know, this is the big one for me. So if you've watched my other video on parasites, you know, I talked about how I was thinking that I got exposed to uh, cryptosporidium and giardia via like lakes and streams, but I actually did some, some swimming in some local swimming pools or swimming holes as well. And I found that even chlorine and some of the common disinfectants that are used do not kill off these pathogens. Now, what you have to have for a lot of these things to make you susceptible to them is leaky gut. So I'm sure you've heard of leaky gut. Look how skinny this marker is. That marker's too skinny. I hope you can read it. But leaky gut is really the condition that can be caused from stress and gluten and excitotoxins, you know, various toxins that you're exposed to. If the leaky gut situation is present, basically you have these tight junctions in your gut like this, and these tight junctions become more spaced out. Right? So now, you know, especially like cryptosporidium, it really gets in these crypts here, these these really deep crevices, if you will, in the intestines when you have that increased permeability. So, you know, gut health is really a part of all of this and making sure that you're reducing your susceptibility to these things. So maybe you do swim in water that has parasites, but if your gut is nice and healthy and you have a nutrient-dense anti-inflammatory diet 
and your gut is good, you have your stress under control, you're using supplements, you're making sure that you don't have adrenal issues, you're gonna be less able to have a parasite that's going to make a home in your body, essentially. It's not to say live in a bubble, don't enjoy yourself, don't swim. Swimming's great, it's good for you to get the sunshine and just get away from technology sometimes, but you have to do it in a smart way. So anytime you have the ability to go to a natural source of water as opposed to like a chlorinated public pool, especially children, because they're gonna be more susceptible, I'm gonna link several different studies down below that looked at increased cancer risk with exposure to specifically the trihalomethanes. A lot more risk of cancer when you're exposed to things like trihalomethanes. You're combining that with the cancer risk of these other issues here. It's, it's not a good situation. So just really just kind of zooming out and increasing your awareness about this situation is the first step and then taking action by avoiding these things as much as possible is the second step. So if you'd like to schedule a 15 minute free consult with myself, you can anywhere around the world and I'd be happy to talk with you about your health symptoms, your health goals. This is Evan Brand. I'll talk with you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.